Welcome to the Elements of Music Listening Skills, a quick revision guide before you try the Listening Skills questions. If you need any extra help, there are three Elements of Music quizios um, online as well. So the Elements of Music are pitch, rhythm, dynamics, tempo, timbre, texture and structure. And here's a reminder of each of those and what they mean. Pitch is to do with high and low sounds, so the actual names of the musical notes. Musical notes can follow on from each other, played one at a time, to make melodies. Or they can be played all at the same time to make chords or harmony, like the three notes C, E and G played together will give you a chord of C. So the notes in melodies can also be repeated, staying on the same pitch like the first three notes of Beethoven's Symphony No. 5. The notes can move by step, like the steps of a ladder, for example C to D to E, like the beginning of this melody by the Norwegian composer Edward Grieg. The first five notes are A, B, C, D, E. And then it starts to leap around a little bit. And melodies can move by leap. The first three notes of this melody, sung by slaves as they were freed from an island in America, Michael row the boat ashore. The first three notes are C, E and G. So the melody starts with some leaps, but then there's some repeated notes and some movement by step. So as we've seen, melodies can have a mixture of all three of these ways of moving, using repeated notes, using movement by step, or using movement by leap. This example, Twinkle Twinkle Little Star, uses all three of those things really well. As soon as we hear the leap at the beginning, we know what this tune is, we recognise it. But almost every note is doubled up, in other words repeated. After the leap at the beginning, the rest of the movement is all by step, working its way back down to where it starts. But all the steps are doubled up with repeated notes. In the listening questions, the aspect of rhythm that you'll be asked about will be to do with metre. That's the way that notes are grouped in time. So sometimes they're grouped in twos or threes or fours. Here are a few points that might help you to understand what the questions are asking you when you're listening. When we listen to music, we can move to the beat. Some beats are usually stronger than others. We can feel the beat in groups of two, three or four, or sometimes more. And beat one is usually the strongest beat. This is how we know how many beats there are. How many beats do we need to count up to before we get to the next one? And that will tell you how the beats are grouped. That's known as the meter or the time signature. Here are some examples. Some two beat, three beat and four beat groups. So the little arrow on top of the note is an accent. That means that note's louder. In these patterns, you wouldn't really need that because we always know to make beat one stronger and we feel it when we're performing or when we're listening to the music. So the two beat groups would be one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. Now there might be other rhythms to go along with that to make the music more interesting but you should be able to feel those two beats that strong backwards and forwards between beat one and beat two. Three beat groups one two three one two three one two three one two three and four beat groups 
one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Dynamics is how loud the music is or how soft it is. Soft is a word that musicians use to mean quiet. So some sections of music can be loud and others can be soft. Uh, it's good to have a contrast sometimes. You could have a loud section followed by a soft section and then another loud one. Loud, soft, loud. You could have a song with a soft verse and a loud chorus, for instance. You could hear how a piece of music starts softly and then builds up to a very loud, exciting ending. Tempo is how fast or slow the beat is. So the tempo could be fast or very fast, it could be slow or very slow. And then there's a word that we use for somewhere in the middle, like not too slow, not too fast, and that word is moderato, and it means moderately. Timbre is what the sounds sound like. It can be quite difficult to understand and to explain, but basically how a violin sounds different from a trumpet, how a classical guitar can sound different from an electric guitar. Some words we use to describe this type of sounds could be wooden, for example the xylophone, or metallic, for example glockenspiel. We could use harsh or mellow. We could talk about string sounds. We could say string sounds that are bowed or string sounds that are plucked. They are two different timbres. We can also describe sounds as electronic or natural. Texture is a word that we use to describe the way that the layers of sound are put together in any music. Three useful words. Monophonic, that means one single melody part with nothing else. So a solo flute melody with no accompaniment, for example. But you can also have more than one person performing a monophonic part if they're all singing the same melody. So you could have 20 people all singing the same melody, or you could have 10,000 football fans singing the same chant together. As long as they're singing the same notes at the same pitch, it's monophonic. Homophonic is when you have different parts, so different pitched parts or voices making chords or harmony, but all with the same rhythm. For example, a choir singing different notes, but all at the same time. So the 10,000 football fans, if some of them are singing different notes in harmony, that would then become homophonic music. And the last word is polyphonic. This means when you have layers that have their own patterns and rhythms, maybe two or more different melodies that weave around each other. For example, all the instruments and vocals in a pop or rock band or a melody with an accompaniment. And the last element is structure. And this is how music is organised in sections. So, for example, a piece of music could start with an introduction, followed by a main melody, and then maybe a contrasting idea. You may have had a look at the smart school quizios on form, binary form is the smart level, ternary form the smarter level and rondo form the smartest level. Binary form is when you have two ideas and normally each idea is repeated so you have an idea A repeated, another A and then a different idea, idea B and then that's repeated too so A, A, B, B. Ternary form is a three part form it's like a sandwich of ideas. Start off with idea A, then you have a different tune, which is idea B, and then another section, which is a repeat of A. Rondo form is when you have one idea, one section of music that keeps returning. So in this example, the A section keeps returning A, then a different idea B, an episode or a contrasting section, then A, again, then a different idea again, C, A, D, and so on. Coda is a special ending, it's normally based on the A idea. Verses and choruses in songs are a good example of how songs are structured and an easy way to describe what's happening in a song. But you also get introductions in songs, you also get pre-choruses and bridge, normally two-thirds of the way through, or sometimes that's called a middle eight. So that's the revision done. Now it's time to have a go at doing the quiz and seeing how many of the questions you can find the answers to. 
Remember to listen to the music carefully to find the answers, but before you do that, make sure you read all the options. And remember, the correct answer is the one that fits best. Sometimes you just have to make a guess, and quite often that will be the right answer. Good luck!